Hi, this is Dr. Nick Buger at North Seattle Community College, and today we're going to be talking about redox titration. If you haven't already watched the acid-base titration tutorial videos, then go back and watch those before you watch this video. The method today is going to be very, very similar to the acid-base titration videos, but with two major differences. The first difference is that it's going to involve a redox reaction rather than an acid-base reaction. And the second difference is there's no indicator required. We'll explain why we don't need an indicator later on in this video. We have our burette, which I've already filled with our titrate, which in this case is a solution of potassium permanganate of known concentration. Do make sure that you write down the uh, actual concentration that's listed on the bottle. The first thing we must do is get rid of the bubble at the tip of the burette. We're going to place our temporary waste container right here. I'm going to turn on the valve, full blast, for a second or two. And now you can see that the tip of the red is full of titrate, and there are no bubbles present. It's now time to prepare the analyte. We will begin by measuring 10 milliliters of the sulfuric acid. We can use the 10 milliliter graduate cylinder for this, because the sulfuric acid is going to be present in excess and therefore, the volume measurement doesn't have to be incredibly accurate. We're going to transfer the last milliliter or so using the transfer pipette to make it a little easier on ourselves. I'm now going to add the 10 milliliters of sulfuric acid to our 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. The peroxide, on the other hand, our volume measurement does have to be very accurate, so we're going to be using a volumetric pipette for this. As demonstrated in the acid-base titration tutorial, we want to use the thumb wheel to draw the peroxide up into the volumetric pipette until the bottom of the viscous touches the marking that's just above the wide portion. I'm now going to transfer that to our 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, and our analyte is now prepared. Before we begin the titration, we must measure the volume in our burette. I'm going to slide the burette downwards, and one thing you'll notice is that some burettes have black graduations, and some burettes have white graduations. If we have black graduations, like the one shown here, using a white sheet of paper can really help be able to read that more easily. And I can see that this currently contains 7.95 uh, milliliters, or we're at the 7.95 milliliter marking. Should your burette have white graduations, something like a black notebook can help you read those graduations more easily. It's now time to start our titration. I'm going to slide the burette back upwards, replace the magnetic stir bar underneath, and add our solution of analyte. It's time to turn on the stirring. We want a good rapid stir rate, but we don't want splashing to occur. That's pretty good right there. It's important to know that a big difference between this redox titration and the acid-base titration is, is that there's no indicator necessary. The reason for that is that our titrant has an intense purple color. We'll be able to tell the progress of the reaction by observing this purple color. I'm now going to turn the stopcock to begin addition of the titrant. And what you'll note is that the purple color rapidly dissipates upon hitting the solution as it reacts with the hydrogen peroxide. You may also be able to see bubbles of oxygen forming as oxygen is one of the products of this reaction. You'll notice that these splashes of purple color 
are starting to linger longer and longer, indicating that we're closing in on our endpoint. When that purple color remains for at least 60 seconds, that means that we have completely consumed our hydrogen peroxide and we've reached our endpoint. We want to pinpoint this endpoint down to a single drop of titrant added in order to get the most accurate measurement possible. And so we're looking for a faint pink color, faint purple color. A deep purple color would mean we've gone too far. And so there's our endpoint right there. It looks like it's going to stick around. This color should persist for at least 60 seconds. At this point, you want to record the volume on your burette and uh, make sure you record that in your lab notebook. The analyte should be disposed of in a waste container as usual rather than poured down the drain. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. As always, if questions arise, please ask your lab instructor. This is Dr. Nick, signing off.